Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Live on Facebook, streaming in. Everyone from front to back. Brother Aaron, how you doing? I'm going to get you to lead us in prayer, if you don't mind. Come up this way. We had Sunday school this morning, and Brother Aaron, I was sitting in the back. I thought it was Leon when I came in. <laughs> Hallelujah. <clears throat> but I know you live in the 120, right, brother? Amen. All of us are. I want to welcome everyone to Emmanuel Ministry. We'll get into uh, the service. I'm going to ask Brother Aaron to lead us in prayer before we get started, and then we'll just do the announcements and just celebrate the victory. What do you all think about it? Sunday morning? I love that. I went to, well, I don't know. Everybody knows Caverna. Maybe they don't. I went to school at Caverna, and I used to <coughs> stay all night with some of my friends, and I remember one of the moms would always say, get up, boys, it's Sunday morning. You know, we'd all go, and hey, some of them hadn't been to bed yet, but that didn't matter either. Just get up. Let's go. So as we get into the next service, I'm going to ask Brother Aaron, if he would, to come and lead us in prayer. Brother Aaron Jaggers. Amen. How far you want me up here? <laughs> Lord, we love you today. We thank you for this wonderful day. It's a day that you've made, and we're so blessed to be a part of it. And I thank you. We worship you, and we just want to glorify you and give you all the praise today and celebrate ce celebrate who you are, celebrate who you are to us, and celebrate who we are in you today. Celebrate your victory. Your victory is ours. All of your accomplishments are ours. Everything that you have planned for us, we uh, look to partake of it today. And we thank you, and we give you all the praise and the glory, and we exalt your word above everything today. I thank you that your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. We feed upon it today. We grow by feeding upon it, and we look to it to be source of our strength. And I thank you for that. I thank you for all that you've done for us, and we thank you for everything that you're going to do for us. And we thank you for the word today that will be brought. We thank you that it will bring light to us and revelation. And we worship you. We worship you and praise you so much and give you all the glory and all the praise. And we pray in your name, in Jesus' name, amen. Appreciate you, and we love you. Well, welcome to Emmanuel Ministry. Can anyone hear me out there all the way in the back? Ricky? Good, good. Online, streaming online, whether scattered or gathered, we are the church, as we say. Got a few announcements today. We had Hallelujah night last night. Go pretty good, real good, Les. We had Hallelujah where we was at, too. <laughs> so. We got the rush late after everybody got the candy, so that was a blessing. We want to welcome everyone to Emmanuel Ministry. We have any first-time visitors here, and I know we do. Actually, I have one that's already got the card fit up. Thank you so much. Got a dog there. Hey, praise the Lord. God loves Opie. Welcome, Opie. Glad to have you. Love animals. That's Ron and Kathy Robbins, everybody. Thank you for getting that card to me first. Any other first-time visitors? Right there, if, they, if you guys got a card yet, they'll give you a card. Roy, get them a card, please. Yeah, we have a card, and you just fill a little bit out. We like for you to get some literature, and we let you know what we believe and how we believe and how we are in Christ, of course. But we also like to get a little information from you so that we can send you uh, a welcome card and be a part of the ministry. All right, thank you. So that's good. We have first-time visitors. Praise the Lord. We're always glad to have first-time visitors. Maybe online, your first-time visitor. It's an honor and a privilege to be in the house of God. Like I said, I remember, <coughs> actually, it was Dan Rice's mom. I remember she used to say, Sunday morning, boys, Sunday morning. That, that was a special day, and they, we went to church all day. When you go with Dan or any of them, it, you might as well, and they ate there and everything. That's what they did, so I enjoyed it, too. As a kid, it was fun, and now I still enjoy Sunday mornings. How many enjoy Sunday mornings? I mean, really and truly, think about it. Isn't it the greatest day of the week? Woo! Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> I'm doing announcements. I'm sorry. <clears throat> All right. The church is open from Sanctuary Prayer each Sunday morning from 9 to 9.25 a.m. We have classes for all ages at 9.30 each Sunday morning and at 6.30 each Wednesday night. And we just keep growing in our classes. We have to put another table out maybe this Wednesday. Praise the Lord. That's what we want to do. We want to keep growing and keep teaching and keep knowing. And then when we know, we can go out, as Brother Aaron said, and put a sign up that says, No Trespassing. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Also, all children who want to sing, we're going to get to meet again today. Cheryl said that she would meet with you after church on the front of the stage right here. Last week they didn't get to, but any children interested in singing, any children now, come on up after church and meet right here. Is that correct? 
and <laughs> will get you involved in the praise and worship of this church. Ages 5 to 12, okay? So ages 5 to 12. We have ages from here all the way up to 120 almost, praise the Lord. So we got them. Praise God. The follow-up for the walks and Christmas flights will be next Saturday, which would be this Saturday coming, correct? Which that's when you take back your clocks also too. So everybody gets an extra hour of sleep next Saturday night. So take advantage of that. It's going to work for everyone. It says here that... Uh, <clears throat> monthly gathering will be combined. The board will meet at 4.30 p.m. The potluck meal will be at 5 with the service to follow. All right? Also, if you are packing a Christmas child shoe box, they are due back on or before next Sunday. So that's the Sunday coming. So if you got any problems with it, you better get on with it. I know there's 55 days left to Christmas. I wrote that down. You know there's only eight more Sundays. You start thinking about that. So Christmas, eight more Sundays. And they always say, where did it go? Where did it go? Well, praise the Lord. It says a box is on the table for giving towards the $9 per box cost of shipping and purchase of the dis excuse me, <coughs> discipleship material. The packing party will be Wednesday, November the 10th at 6.30 p.m. All right, Miss Judy uh, has an announcement here. It says the School of Prophets will meet 6.30 tomorrow night at her house, Melvin's house, 6.30, School of the Prophets. Uh, and it says the bottom here, slow time begins early next Sunday morning. So set your clocks back. And then November activity calendars are in the foyer. So don't forget those. Also, this wasn't put on here, but I'm sure everyone's aware of it. But I want to kind of let you know uh, the jail ministry is today, all right? And I'd like to get their names. And I did at 3 p.m. Uh, the ones that will be going for the man ministry is uh, Chris and JT and uh, Mr. David Yates, all right? So that's the 3 p.m. Now, the 6 p.m. is uh, Sammy, Brother Sammy, and uh, me. So we're doing the 3 and the 6. So remember us in your prayers. We're going into the jails. You know, Jesus said that, didn't he? So when I was in jail, you came to me. When you been in jail, Master? Well, if you've done it to them, you've done it to him. So as we go in there, we just believe for uh, people's to, lives to get changed and one day see them in this church maybe or a church close by. And I think that takes care of all of our announcements. Uh, if you would, please stand to your feet, if you would, and look at your neighbor. If you don't mind, I always like to say, if you can't stand on the outside, stand on the inside. But I want you to look at your neighbor, and I want you to say, something good is going to happen to you today. Hallelujah. Something good is going to happen to you. I'm telling you, it will happen. Right? We're going to turn the world upside down in the book of Acts. I know the Bible's right and somebody's wrong today. I know that much. I told somebody that yesterday. I said, the Bible's right and somebody's wrong. So... We know it's right, and as we go further into it, I want you to realize that I am looking at a church full of victorious people, whether you believe it or not, okay? You are victorious in Christ, and when you get victorious in Christ, you can worship freely. It's a great Sunday school class this morning, and just stirs you up to hear that kind of teaching that you know you are in Christ, and because of Him, we stand here today, and we're going to give Him worship. We're going to give Him praise. You think about David. He spoke to the giant and told him what he was going to do before he done it, didn't he? He said, I'm going to cut your head off. He didn't even have the sword. He took the sword from the giant, cut his head off, and said, I'm getting the boys behind you too today, he said, didn't he? Why? Because he had a covenant with God, just like we have a covenant with God. And because of that, he looked at that man and said, you uncircumcised Philistine. In other words, he did not have a covenant with God. And he looked at his brothers and said, why are y'all letting him Talk to y'all like that. you got the covenant. We have the covenant today. So as we begin to worship, we're going to go right into it. And God's going to get the praise. In Jesus' name, thank you very much. Hallelujah.
Just a little bit out of the Passion Translation this morning. Uh, here we go. 
here we go. I was spending some time in prayer yesterday morning and found this. Delenn was talking about finding nuggets. He said, get out your spiritual shovel and dig up some of those gems, he said. You got to get out your spiritual shovel and do some digging. Uh, but I found this yesterday morning. It's in Colossians chapter 1. It says, he is the head of his body, which is the church. And since he is the beginning and the firstborn heir in resurrection, he is the most exalted one, holding first place in everything. Amen. Isn't that good? For God is satisfied to have all his fullness dwelling in Christ. And by the blood of his cross, everything in heaven and earth is brought back to himself back to its original intent restored to innocence again amen restored to innocence again even though you were once distant from him living in the shadows of your evil thoughts and actions he reconnected you back to himself amen isn't god good he reconnected us back to himself restored back to innocence again isn't God good? Amen. The song is titled, All Things New. All Things New. Restored back to innocence again. You make all things new. The Bible says that, uh, that we become a new creation. Remember that scripture? You become a new creation. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. How many things become new? all things amen you know i don't know where you're at uh today but it's talking about a broken heart you know jesus said he came to heal the brokenhearted to set at liberty the captives amen we don't know where you're at today we don't know what's going on in your life but we do know that god answers prayers we know that god is concerned about people amen he is concerned. The Bible says, For God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten Son. Amen. Because of what reason? What reason did God send his Son? Because of love. Amen. Because of love. God is good. He loves people. I was praying when I, when I went into prayer after reading yesterday. The Lord wants us to share that he is good and that he is merciful. He wants us to share that with people. There's somebody watching from Facebook today that doesn't know that. God is good, and he is all the time, and he is merciful. We can stiff arm him. We can resist him. We don't have to come to him. He gives us free will. But if we come to the Lord, he can help us. He can restore us back to our original intent. Amen. His original intent. Excuse me. Amen. He makes all things new. Amen. I've heard you can take what's broken and make it whole again. Well, here's the pieces of my heart. What can you do with them? Because I can't hold it all together. So I let them fall, surrender to the floor. You make all things new. You make all things new. God of mercy. Do what only you can do and make all things new. Only you can bring such beauty from the depths of all my pain. Only you can take this shattered heart and make it be again. Oh, you hold us all together in your hands. I surrender all I have and all I am. You make all things new. You make all
God of mercy and love, do what only you can do, and make all things new. Verse 2, only you can bring such beauty from the depths of all my pain. Only you can take this shattered mark and make it be again. Oh, you hold us all together in your hands. I surrender all I have and all I am. You make all Isn't he good? Have you experienced the Lord's mercy? Amen. Can you give him some praise today? Amen. <laughs> oh, man, isn't he good? <laughs> oh, wow. We're going to praise him in this place. Amen. He's worthy. He's worthy of our praise. Hey, I've been in a hole before. I've had a a heart broken. I've had heart issues before, but um, thank God that He is faithful. Amen. He is faithful. Wow. He is good. Ethan's going to help us out here. With the Lord is a way maker. Amen. Anybody believe that? The Lord is a way maker. Amen.
Turn. 
Hallelujah. The Lord says, he says, I see you. He says, I see there's someone, it's either here or on Facebook, that says you feel like you are in a deep pit. You feel like you're close to the pits of hell and there's no way out. He says, I see you right where you are. But you know what else he said? He says, I see my son Jesus. And he is high and lifted up. And he sees you where you are. And he says, see me. Don't see the problem. Don't see the circumstance. But see me. In Sunday school class this morning, we were talking about the works of faith. Because it says in James 2.20, faith without works is dead. So there's some works there. And my kiddos could say, they can tell you, we, we pray, we read the word, we say faith-filled words. But we also learn today that we give glory to God. So in that pit that you're in right now, you give glory God to Amen. God. You go back to his word and you say, thank you, Lord, for whatever it is that I need. You know, say that scripture right, right with it. Because God said he sees you. Amen. But he also sees you where you're going to be. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 We've got to keep looking up, haven't we? <coughs> Amen. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. You have that this morning you want to honor the Lord with financially? We give you the opportunity to plant that seed. The tithe belongs to God. Amen. And then we plant seeds to uh, believe God for his sustaining, miracle-working power. Amen. And every praise is to our God. Can you say amen to that this morning? Every praise is to our God. You come and worship the Lord. Hallelujah. We welcome you today. God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. Amen. Every praise is to our God. And every word of worship. Yeah. 
to give him some glory this morning. Woo! Hallelujah. Every praise is to our God. Glory to God. Amen. Well, come on in, brother boys. Praise the Lord. I want to give you just a little short uh, uh, business meeting. Our, I did the finality of October because this often will go in November, so where it goes into the bank, it's counted in that month. So through October, we have uh, already topped what we did last year the whole year because of God's glory and blessing you and you in turn giving him his due. And that's all he asked of you. He asked the tenth. It belongs to me, he said. But then you can believe and you can sow if you want to to get an abundance, to get more. God, God will honor that, no doubt. But the tithe is the Lord's. It doesn't belong to J.C. Penney or Walmart or somebody like that, right? So as you honor the Lord and bring him the tithe, I believe he blesses and he blesses and he blesses. And it's evident that he is. And I, I thank God and I thank you for honoring the Lord. So we're not braggadocious, just bragging on God. Amen. Amen. Brother Tom, you want to bless us? Dear Heavenly Father, it's our good privilege and honor to be here today to worship you and to praise you and to lift up the name of Jesus, Lord. We thank you so much for our wonderful Savior, Lord. There's so many adjectives to use to describe him. He's a wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Can't thank you enough for our Savior, Lord. And we just thank you for uh, the privilege and opportunity to use that name, Lord, while we're here on this earth. And at the mention of that name, all of heaven stands at attention. Demons tremble. Sickness, darkness, and disease has to flee. We just thank you so much for the privilege of that name, Lord, for there is no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. And we thank you so much, Lord, that when we call out in faith in that name that our sins are forgiven, washed away and cast in the sea of forgetfulness, never to be remembered again. We praise you forever, Lord, for just that reason right there. We're so thankful. And Father, it's our good pleasure to bring these tithes and offerings here today, Lord. We, we lay them here at your feet, and we ask for your blessing upon each of these, and we pray that you will be done and your kingdom established by the giving done here today. We love you, Lord, and we pray this prayer in the matchless name of Jesus. Amen. Lord, you can be seated. Praise the Lord. God is good. We thank you, uh, each one of you, for your participation last night. We had a good turnout of our church, really good. Uh, there wasn't a lot in the community that came, but uh, the church had a good time. Didn't y'all have a good time? The few of you that's here this morning that was here last night, <laughs> uh, we had a better time than that, <laughs> but that's all right. Uh, I can't uh, make decisions for anybody else. I'll just try to take care of Linda's business. My business. <laughs> And Linda and I want to thank you for your gifts and your show of support of us uh, in this ministry here today. And thank you for your gifts, and we'll take advantage of them at some point in time. We don't know uh, as it's going to happen this fall, but possibly next year we'll get to utilize that, and that'll be good. Whenever it is, it'll be good. So we thank you. Thank you for it. Praise God. Well, our God is a good God. Amen. All the time. Amen. Well, our God is a good God. Yes, he is. I say our God is a good God. Yes, he is. I know our God is a good God. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Amen. We want to talk about this good God today. I don't have a bad story to come to you with. I have a good story. It's all about Jesus. It's all about God. It's all about his kingdom. But I do want to parallel the two kingdoms because you and I have a choice. Every one of us have a choice of uh, which one we serve and which one we honor and which one we're going to uh, live in or follow after or promote in our lives. And regardless of whether you, whether you get up in the morning and say, I'm going to choose this way. Every decision you make and everything you do all day long is, in a sense, a choice of which one that you follow and which one that you represent, which one you serve. Can I get an amen? Amen. 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 We're constantly choosing whose we are, whose we follow, whose we obey, whose we 
support, who we represent or represent. And I just want to give you some information about the two kingdoms. And uh, this morning, if you could get conscious with a choice, I think you would choose God. I think you would choose to serve the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, to follow after the plan of God and not after the plan of the devil, because I want to assure you God's plan is much better than the devil's plan. Amen. Early on in the beginning, when God made man, he made him after his image and after his likeness, and he made man for purpose. The Bible tells us in Revelation chapter 4 that God uh, created for his pleasure. God created the things that he created for his pleasure. So he could, we could say that God created us for his pleasure. Can you say that with me? God created me for his pleasure. Well, as we go through time and we see the different things and choices that people made, there were things that didn't please God. Matter of fact, pretty early on in, in the book of Genesis, we find that man's mindset and man's attitude had got all messed up. And really it goes back to the choice that Adam and Eve made in the garden because God told them exactly what was going on. Here's the perimeters. Here's how it's going to go down. If you eat, you can eat of everything in the garden. It's all there for you. Not anything that man needed that wasn't in that garden. And God has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness through our Lord Jesus Christ. There's not a thing in this world that we need that hadn't been provided us through the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. But Satan's going to always try to lure you over the line. He's going to try to tempt you and draw you off sides. This is football season for some of you. Some of you could care less. But many times when it gets right down to the crunch and maybe a team needs four or five more yards to kick a field goal, they'll try to draw the team off sides and get a five-yard penalty, and that will put them in field goal range. And uh, I've seen that happen, so that's why I know. <laughs> uh, but the devil will try to draw you off sides with something. He'll try to trick you, do some little tricky-do. Amen. Have you found out the devil's a little bit tricky? Yeah. He'll promise you the world and give you nothing. Amen. So Adam and Eve took the bait. Uh, the devil deceived Eve, and Adam was right there with her. They both ate. And, and the next thing you know, we're in this mess. And uh, it's a curse. It's just a curse has come down upon man. And God wasn't pleased with that. It did not please God to really have to put the Adam and Eve out. That wasn't how he wanted it to go down. I assure you in the beginning, God didn't make the devil with his plan. If he did, he'd have no reason to judge anybody that took it. If God made the evil and you chose evil, then God would be unjust to charge you with the what decision you made. But God is perfect, and he's not unjust, and he did not make evil, and he did not choose you to choose evil. Amen. It's not case or ah, or ah, whatever will be, will be. You and I have a choice. The devil was a conniver, and he drew them off sides by, by lacing something in there. Oh, you know, he, you won't die. Just... God just, God just, he's always had this complex problem. He wants to be up there by himself. And he knows if you eat of this, you're going to be like him. Lie, lie, lie. And he's still a liar. And he's still lying. And he's still deceiving. He's still trying to draw people off sides. And he's got different things he's using today. Snort a little of this, drink a little of this, shoot a little of that, watch a little of this. It won't hurt you to watch them old movies. Did you ever see such hideous stuff as they got on TV today? And these movies, they're putting out these movies, and people pay, actually pay money to go watch that. That's, it's beyond my imagination, but nonetheless, that's just the choice of the people, see. But God is a good God, and he made us for his pleasure, and what Adam did there did not bring God any pleasure. So God sought, and he's a perf perfect God. He's perfect in his word. He's perfect in his choice. He's perfect in everything he does. So God had to set it up perfectly to get this fixed. 
He couldn't just come along, smack things down, and say, I'll just fix that. No, he had to do it right. But God had got so beside himself there in the beginning when man was choosing and his imagination was altogether wrong, he just decided, I'll wipe the whole thing out and start over. Remember that? There was a man named what? Noah. What did he find? He found grace, didn't he? Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. I'm dry this morning. And uh, that grace brought a plan. That grace didn't just say, okay, I'm, I'll, I'll just fix it and nothing. No, that grace was a 120-year-long project. 120 years. Amen. I, I think we ought to have a 120-year project, don't you? We should be working on something. I believe if we live out our full days, we'll have 120 years to finish the project. Amen. Now, God don't want you to live 120 years with an aching back. Amen. Or swelled knees or sore eyes. No. So he brought about something called health and healing through his son, Jesus Christ, so you could live healthy and live whole lives and not dread 120 years. Amen. Amen. I mean, some people live 50 years and then they dread the rest of them. But no, we shouldn't be living dreaded years. It ought to get gooder all the time. Amen. Getting better, not better. Amen. But God is good. So he, he sought a plan to fix this thing. It, uh, sickness and disease and poverty and lack didn't please God. And he was looking and said, now, how am I going to fix this? Well, I'm sure he looked at a, you know, uh, alley cat or he looked at a puppy dog or he looked at different things that maybe he could but that wouldn't cut the mustard it took his own son to fix it it took a human to fix it you know it, it, it's it's rough to think about it but God chose to give his own son to fix this thing for me and you that ought to help us to choose to serve God that he would go to such extreme measures to get this curse off of us, it ought to entice us to want to live curse-free. Amen. Amen? So God so loved, he gave what? His only begotten son. That when you believe in him, you, you come into the capacity of everlasting life. When you receive Jesus as your personal Savior and you, you get born again, you step into an arena where it's eternal life, everlasting life. Not in these physical bodies, but praise God. We've got a duration of time here. Our expiration date ought to be 20 or 30 or 40 or 50 years. It ought to be well on out there that we live in these earth suits and bring glory and honor and praise unto God. Now, I think God set that 120 thing because it gets pretty populated down here. If everybody that's died since the beginning of time lived to 120 years, how much population would we have here now? We'd be populated pretty good, wouldn't we? Amen. But nonetheless, God knows what he's doing, so we'll just listen to him and follow him. I think God wants us to live a good, healthy, solid life, long life will he satisfy us with. Amen? And I guess if you get satisfied and you want to go home, if it's not 120 years, that's between you and God. If you're satisfied, drive on. Amen? But I believe you have the right by the Bible to believe for 120 years if that's what you want. Amen? Anyhow. Uh, so, the, so sickness and disease didn't please God. So God uh, did something to fix that for us. We know that something was Jesus Christ. We know that something includes being born of the Spirit of God because being born again and washed in the blood of Jesus is what brings us into the kingdom of God, and the kingdom of God is where all his goodies are. Every promise of God is yes and amen to the Lord Jesus Christ. For all the promises of God are what? Yes and amen through the Lord Jesus Christ. Every promise. So we find in there there's no exclusions. You don't go down and see the little fine print in the Bible nowhere. No, it's right there. And every promise of God in Christ is what? Yes. yes. And what? Amen. Amen. So we need to know that. That's, that's God's side of it. Every promise. God promised us 
All these things. And when we get in Christ, we qualify for every single promise of God. But the devil is continually trying to pull us off sides. Continually trying to get us in a compromise into something to where we can't believe for everything God has for us. And trust me, dear friends, if you can truly believe for it, it's yours. But when your heart condemns you, you cannot. When your own spirit condemns you, you cannot, not will not, you cannot believe God for everything. So you've got to keep that part of you right. And the devil knows it. He's going to try his best to get you in a position to where you're condemned. Now, Jesus didn't come to condemn us. Amen? For Jesus didn't come to condemn, but to what? Save. But because men's ways are evil, there's a problem. Amen? So we got to look at this thing and know that the devil is constantly trying to get us into a compromising position because he knows if we stay right with God, if we walk right, live right, talk right, do right, he cannot do anything with that. He cannot stop it. I mean, it's inevitable. Every promise of God is going to manifest itself. It's yes and amen to the believer, and he cannot do anything with that. So he's got to get you into some kind of doubt and unbelief. He's got to get you in error. He's got to get you to cross that line. He's got to get you to jump the fence. He's got to do something. Now, in the beginning, God set up the Ten Commandments, was kind of a standard or a rule to help man and to really show man that he had a problem, you know. Uh, really, God wasn't trying to condemn nobody with that, but it was giving us guidelines. He was helping us to understand the two systems or the two kingdoms. If we live this way, then we're going to stay in right condition, right place with God, but if we stepped over here and done it another way, we find ourselves disqualified for some things. Amen. So the devil can never beat us. He can never beat us because we have power and authority over him. But if he can get us into disqualification, if he can get you disqualified, well, how would he get you disqualified? Well, get you into disobedience. Get you into unforgiveness. Get you, in, get you into any of the things that God said not to do. And yes, ladies and gentlemen, I'll just tell you right now. The Bible is a book of do's and don'ts. If you don't like that, then you won't like the kingdom of God. Because there's all kind of do's and don'ts in the kingdom of God. If you do this, things will work for you. If you do that, look out. You cannot do that and maintain favor with God. Say, well, but he's my daddy. Well, that may be the fact, but he cannot bless you in that position. Amen. It may not disqualify you from being a son or daughter, but would disqualify you from the blessings and the promises that God has promised you. Amen. Millions and millions and millions of people have come to an emotional yes to Jesus and walked away with ignorance, full of ignorance and doubt and unbelief and living way below what God wants them to live. I ought to have had a better amen than that. That's the truth. I've been there a long time myself, and uh, it's not pretty. God wants you uh, receiving everything that he has for you. Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 9, it tells us about the thoughts of God. What are the thoughts of God about you? Jeremiah chapter 29, not chapter 2, verse 9. Chapter 29, verse, ele verse 11. How would I get 2, 9, to the, I don't know. My paper's wrong. My Bible's right. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord. What are God's thoughts towards you? Thoughts of peace and not of evil. To give you an expected end. God has a destiny for you. He has a plan. He has a place. He has a purpose for you. That is literally out of this world. No doubt about that. But the place here on the earth is a good place, no doubt. It's a place that even in the midst of storms and troubles, you have peace. 
in the midst of difficulties that you might face, troubles, trials, and tribulations in this world, you can be of good cheer because you know God is on your side. The blood's been applied, and you'll not be denied the promises of God. It brings a, it brings a, ple- a peace into your spirit, into your heart. When all hell assails you, you know Jesus will not fail you. Amen. I'm on the rock of ages, and this rock will not roll. Amen. I've got two T-shirts we had at Vacation Bible School a few years ago with this scripture on there. And uh, people think I never changed my clothes, I guess. (laughs) But I wear those two T-shirts during the summer, probably five days a week between the two of them. Uh, I know the thoughts that I think towards you. No telling how many times that people say, man, I like that. People say, brother, I like that right there now. And so I like to wear that because it reminds people of what God's thinking. God's got good thoughts towards you. Look at your neighbor and say, God's thinking good thoughts towards you today. He don't have bad thoughts. God's not looking at you and say, I'll get even with him. Right? God's got good thoughts. He's got pleasant thoughts. He's got peaceful thoughts. He's got a thought and a plan that even right where you're at, uh, uh, I My little GPS system, I don't use it much, but I was delivering food uh, the other day in Mumfordville, the place I didn't know the street at all. So when I got to the high school, I stopped and punched that address in. Perry Smith's good about this. He can just just fly through that. But I punched it in, and and I looked up, and there's a car behind me, and I could tell that they was feverish to go. So when I took off, uh, my little dot didn't go the line that was drawn. So I knew I was going to have to turn around and go back and get in the right road. Aren't you glad for God? Aren't you glad that when you go to do something that's not conducive to that of a Christian or to the walk of a Christian, there's something inside you that just, mm, 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 no, eh. You know, that's what I want my spirit man to just say, eh. <laughs> you know, but it's a, it's a gentle, it's a gentle thing, you know, but I thank God it's in there. Yeah. And that little old GPS just showed me I was going the wrong way here. And so I just, what did I do? I repented. Thank God. Can you thank God this morning for repentance? I thank God for repentance, man. I mean, it has helped me stay out of a bunch of trouble. No telling where I'd be if it wasn't for the ability and the goodness of God that leads me to repentance. That's exactly what Paul said it would do. The goodness of God would lead you to repent or turn around. You're going the wrong way, hoss. Aren't you thankful? Well, that's what that little GPS thing did. It just said, just basically said, it didn't say nothing. There wasn't no voice on it. Now, Linda's got one that talked, or we had one that talked in this monotone women's voice. And it was like, no, no, we need to do better than that. (laughs) So we found one with a men's voice. Now, I can't listen to a woman. That ain't the thing. I can. I I know. I've got a problem. I know I have. But I can listen. But this thing was monotone. It was way behind. It was almost like you'd done way off before she ever said a thing. So we got a man's voice. And it basically, when you turn the wrong way, it's done, it's done saying like, turn around, you dummy. You know, I'll let me do that. I could, I could do that. But, but anyhow, God says, I know the thoughts. And I, I was grateful that the thing was there, that GPS system. And it took me. I followed that thing, Aaron. And I mean, I didn't make another bad turn. It took me right. Don't you think the Holy Ghost is better than that? Better than that. Now, you look sometimes and you see a way and think, the Holy Ghost, man, it's a straight shot right down through there. That is a good way to go. And you taking me this way. You better take the Holy Ghost route. Ain't that right? I mean, we don't walk by our eyesight. We walk by faith. We trust the Holy Ghost. When he leads us, where he, we sing the song, where he leads me, I will follow. Is that right? So you better follow. Amen. I'll go with him, with him, with him all the way. We ain't going that way, are we? Yeah, we're going to go that way. Amen. We listen to his voice. Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. They will not follow somebody else. So we got to know that God's plans 
and the GPS system of God is going to lead us to the expected end. Well, basically, the expected end is a place of victory. It's a place of an overcomer. It's a place called heaven, if you want to get right down to it. It's a place to where the milk and the honey flow. It's a good place. It's a place to where you, you, you have goodly homes. You didn't even build them. You have good gardens, and you didn't even plant one. I mean, that don't even seem right, does it? But yet, in essence, that's the type of place that God has for us, a destiny that is a great spot to be. Amen. Well, the devil's ideas, and, and I looked at the devil's side of it, and basically every time I looked and tried to figure out what the devil's situation was up to, it come down to killing, stealing, and destroying. I mean, when I looked at God's side, and then I come back, and when, in essence, every time I came back to the devil's side, it was for one purpose. The devil comes not but to. This is what he's after. Every time. It was just crazy. Always led to stealing, killing, and destroying. Even though it seemed like at times, man, he's got the right road. He's, that is exactly what I'm looking for. But man, you better look behind that. You better look on down the road. Have you ever been into that good looking apple? And all of a sudden you look down and you knew the other half of that was in your mouth? <laughs> That's the way the devil will do you. It looks good out here, but I'm an I'm a apple-eating machine, Greg. I can eat them apples, boy. And I've been over at Ricky's and got some pears, too. And I've, I've been wearing them pears here, but, boy, I have spit out a lot of stuff the last few weeks <laughs> because I see what I've done took into. Well, that's how he'll do. He'll just mess you up if you let him. So basically, if you want to look for his kingdom and his results, you can find it in John 10, 10, first half. Jesus tells us the devil come for this, killing, stealing, destroying. But in the back, last half of that, he tells us exactly what he came for. I have come that you might have life and life abundantly. Amen. How many like abundant life? You know, abundant life don't mean that you're a billionaire. But it means whatever you have need of, you have an abundance of. How many of y'all need socks? Has everybody here got sufficient socks? Anybody here got abundant socks? I got boxes of socks. I got shelves of socks. I got drawers of socks that I hadn't even opened that drawer. And that's where I used to get my socks out of. And that drawer's still full of good socks. Because a couple of years ago at Pastor Appreciation Time, everybody gave me socks. <laughs> and I'm still running over with socks. Matter of fact, they're multiplying. So I got some socks for you if you need them. But, you know, abundance means you got more of that than what really you can use. Now, we came home the other night, the Saturday night, Friday night, whatever it was, and there was something on our porch. And it was like so many jars of tomato juice, so many jars of green beans, so many jars of carrots, just in abundance. Praise God. The Lord just blesses us and blesses us and blesses us. Sometimes we go out in the garage and open the, open the door, and there's fresh vegetables in there. I've got a garden over here. The worms are eating on it quite a bit. Uh, I've gotten some stuff out of it, but it just keeps coming. Freezer, open the freezer door, frozen corn on the cob. I mean, just an abundance. Isn't the Lord good? And I know he uses people to make that happen. And I know when they take the joy that's in their heart and make that happen to somebody, God is already setting in motion things to bless them by. When you get into that, you get into that motion. You get into that way of living. It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. You do those things with a smile on your face and joy in your heart because you've proven that God is faithful all the time, every time. Matter of fact, there's kind of a thought pattern 
in the kingdom of God of what you make happen for others, God will make happen for you. And I believe that's going to work. God will make happen for you because you've made it happen for others. Give and it shall be given. That doesn't just take place here in the offering plate, right? This is the tithe that belongs to the Lord. But we come and we give and we share and we do for others. And what we make happen for others, God somehow or another makes things happen for us. Amen. And I've said it before, even while you're here worshiping the Lord, God's got angels working on your behalf. There's things going on behind the scenes that you can't see. You can't see how it's a setup. That God is setting into motion you're a businessman, more than likely God's putting it within the heart and mind of some people that need your product to come to you instead of your competitor. More than likely God is tuning things around, changing some situations for your sake because you've honored him, God will honor you. I just guarantee you the kingdom works that way. But not so with the devil. Not so. The devil comes to do what? Every time. Say every time. every time. Every time. That's what the devil's about. Yeah. Killing, stealing, and destroying. Yeah. I counted the other days I was just going through the scripture, kind of looking at this thing, the parallel of the two, and I've got a whole good message right here to preach if I just stop here and preach it, but I'm out here doing this. But I found 13 times that I saw in the scripture that God had set in the motion, in, and it's recorded in the scripture, for us to have everlasting life in the presence of God. But I saw on the parallel, Brother Dennis, of what the devil's situation is, is everlasting destruction, everlasting torment, everlasting punishment for him and all that follow him. Make sure you know that when you're choosing to go that way. You need to know what your actions is going to result in. Amen. You think hell is hot? I'm sure it is. But you know when the judgment comes, it's going to cough those up out of hell and they're going to go into a much worse place. And that's called the lake of fire. A lake of fire. How many of y'all like to go fishing on the water? No, Terry Smith ought to have both hands up right now. <laughs> How would you like for that thing to be on fire? No place to get a break. Hell, in my opinion, has the same duration as heaven. I believe heaven's eternal. There's a lot of preachers today preaching that hell is just a short stint because God's a merciful God and he wouldn't want anybody that he created to burn eternally. But the problem is that he didn't tell the people that wrote the Bible that. He forgot to emphasize that part. And they put in the Bible that hell had the same duration as heaven. Imagine that. What a mistake. Or maybe it's not a mistake. Maybe hell really is eternal. How many would side in with the Bible today and say, I believe hell's eternal? Yeah. You're not under the myth that it'll go away in three days, are you? If you are, we need to talk. No, the devil's got a kingdom that's going to wind up in eternal damnation, eternal destruction. And I tell you, you might party with the devil for a little while. It may seem good for a short time, but the end of it is really bad, really bad. And I, I, I know you've seen it. We all have, and our heart goes out. My, I, don't, I don't say it to down anybody, but just for an instance. Have you ever seen the pictures before and after of people that get on these heavy-duty drug situations? You ever seen those beautiful girls that in a year or two, their face is just broke out ever which way? A few years later, all their teeth are broken and gone. It's just ridiculous. It's horrible. Every church ought to have some of those pictures in the thing out here. Before and after. You choose. This is what this lifestyle is going to take you to. Amen. Beware. You make the choice. 
You can decide to go this way, but you can't decide which way you're going to turn out. It's already decided. It's going to come after you. And I'm telling you, and there's a few in here that can say, oh, praise the Lord, I know he bailed me out. Now, you were on the crash course collision for that right there. But God bailed you out. He brought mercy to you. I've heard your testimony, brother. Praise God. Strong testimony right there. What the Lord done for him. It's a wonder you got a tooth, a bone, or anything in your body. God is good, ain't he? He's good. He's good, ain't he, over here, sis? He's good, ain't he? All of you people, every one of us that's went wrong, he's good. Thank God. But let me tell you something. I can tell you for every one of them hands that come up, we can go in this a few minutes drive and we can find you 50 that didn't turn out that good. People that now are Christians, yes, but their body has done went through so much junk that it's destroyed because they chose to go this way and they chose to disobey their spirit. When their little GPS system was saying, mm 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 Right? I mean, you wire the buzzer out. You leave a buzzer on so long, and it'll start up. About two days later, you wear it out. You can do that with the Lord. You can grow callous to where his convicting power doesn't stop you anymore. It don't even itch. Please, dear friends, be sensitive. Be sensitive. I said to some guys this morning, to wigwams that are there every day, none of them go to church ever. All of them are, quote, Christians. And I told them this morning how, how important it is to have a tender heart. And that if you have not got that tender heart today, it's important to pray and ask God to help bring that heart back so that you won't just keep sinning against God. Keep sinning against God. Amen. David said, I've hidden God's word in my heart that I might not sin against him. But see, when you get the word of God in your heart, you obey it, and it's all good. But if you disobey it, the buzzer gets weaker and weaker, and you can wear your buzzer out. These guys have worn the buzzer out. Just, you know, I talked to them a few minutes back. I told them, I said, you know, I've always had a tender heart, and I've told them a story I've told y'all about, and this will date me, I'm sure. It's about when uh, we moved into the new school down here in seventh grade, and uh, a carton of milk and two sh sugar cookies cost a nickel. Now, I know there's a very few in here that remembers that, but you could buy milk and two cookies for a nickel. Yes, you could. And I bought, got my carton of milk, and I picked up the two cookies, and the third one stuck to it. And I give it a shake, and I said, one more time, it didn't come off, so I ate it. <laughs> I did. Uh, I had the power to break it off, but not really, I didn't. <laughs> but I honestly had to repent of that, because the Lord bugged me, and bugged me, and bugged me, that I wished I hadn't ate that cookie. And so when I got the cookie next time, I took one. I tried to pay it back in my own way of doing it. But I had to repent before God because I'd done wrong. And I thank God for being tenderhearted. I'm sure I'm not that good today. But I thank God that it starts there. Kiddos, listen to me. Kiddos, y'all listening? Look at me, listen to me. Your heart's inside of you. When you do something that you know mom and daddy have taught you not to do, and you go on and do it inside of you, there's something wrong in there. You know that? You know that, Lily? When mom and daddy's told you to do something or not to do this, and you go to do it, and something inside of you says, mm-mm, but you go on and try to do it in here. That's your spirit man. You need to stay true to that spirit person. If you'll live right, you'll be good. This is the promise of God to you. If you'll honor your father and mother, it'll be good with you. And long life you'll have. So you're, you're piercing yourself through. If you don't listen to mom and daddy, Rachel, you hear me? 
If you won't listen, you're already short-circuiting the buzzer system. Don't be true to the buzzer system. It starts out with a loving mom and daddy. You say, well, but what they, that, what they put out there is really, it's really not right. Listen, that's beside the point at this time. They're the mom and they're the daddy. Amen. And you need to be true. Now, if they're doing wrong, God's got a buzzer system for them too. But be honored. Be honest and honor them. And it'll be well with you. And God will help you. And you, you. You'll learn to follow the voice of the Holy Ghost. That is his spirit man inside of you to direct you and to help you in the affairs of life. When it's all said and done, the devil wants to kill, steal, destroy, and God wants to bless. What, that's, the, that's in essence what it's all about. God's a blesser. If you look at the system of God, God's, God's kingdom is prosperity. Satan's kingdom is poverty. Which one you want? Who in here wants poverty? If you want poverty, I know some places you can move to and just be thrilled. <laughs> There's a lot of poverty in certain sections of the world. If you want to move over there and live with them, you'd just be happy as a June bug in a berry patch. But I hope and pray that you would choose to be prosperous because God is a prosperous God. And he wants you to prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. As you think right, as you put on the right mindset, put the, the mind of Christ on and think right, God will bless you and sustain you and prosper you, and you'll be the lender and not the borrower. You'll be the blesser, not the dammer. Amen? God's a good God all, all over the place. When you think about the kingdom of God, you think about love and joy and goodness and meekness, and self-control. You think about those things that stem out of the, the heart of God and out of the heart of Jesus Christ and out of the heart of a Christian. Love and joy and meekness and goodness and self-control. Things that bless. Things that want others to do well. You want them to do well, not just yourself to do well. But out of the heart and the character of Jesus Christ, you, you want to bless them. You want to lift them up even if it costs you something. Because you realize that in the long run, it never costs me. Because God always takes care of me. Amen. So I'll be the lender and not the bar. I'm the one that wants to, wants to pick up the tab. I'm the one that wants to pull the heavy end of the load. You know, because we want to be the blesser. Amen. So God's good. The kingdoms of the devil, not that away. Rude, arrogant, mean, hateful, full of strife, full of confusion, full of division. I mean, you, you see the two kingdoms, they're very, very easy to see if you get your eyes open to it. Which one do you choose? Which one do you want to serve? Which one do you want to exhibit? Which kingdom do you want to be an example of? You know, the statistics tells me that every day we influence X many people. We influence about seven people on the average every day. Now, some of us never see seven people, probably the week. But some way or another, the average is that we influence so many people a day with our choices, what we allow to happen, or do you throw that card over to the side and it winds up banging somebody's car or you push it through the rain to the right place where it's supposed to be? We was at Walmart the other day in Bardstown and uh, Linda went in and got some things, and just a few things, and I was going to take the cart, but she'd done off with it. And I said, well, honey, there's somebody pushed one right here by us. We could just park it with that one. No, she took it all the way up there and put it in the thing. It was plum full. And I, I, I was proud of her. I said, yay, Linda. I get in the, I get in the car, yay, Linda. <laughs> Good girl. <laughs> but that's, isn't that right? I mean, that's what you're supposed to do. You should put the cart where it's supposed to be. Now, if somebody comes along and wants a cart, then I say, here, this one's good, and take it. And sometimes it's warped, it runs sideways, but... I try to pray over it that it line out before they get too far. 
But what's kingdom this morning? Uh, it's just a simple, it's a simple question. What's kingdom do we honestly, sincerely want to represent and want to be a part of? And I know your answer is the kingdom of God. You've heard the two parallel. But don't forget it when you go out these doors. And don't forget to be an exhibition of the kingdom of God. Because when we leave the building, there is some truth to the statements, the church has left the building. The connotation in it that the church is gone and they're not coming back to the building is not correct. I don't know of a preacher anywhere that's ever preached the church as a building. I've never heard that preached in my life. We got a building that we meet in, but we're the church that comes here to meet, and we're the church when we live, right? So we, the church, are going to leave out these doors, and we're going to represent and represent some kingdom. Every choice we make, if we cut somebody off in line, if we cut corners, if we don't do things right, if we don't do our job, if we don't care our end at the workplace, if we mistreat our wife or mistreat our children or mistreat our husband, we're representing somebody. Let's choose to represent and represent the kingdom of God this week. Amen? Be about the Father's business. And I think if we'll make that our lifelong ambition, this is our attitude. And attitude determines altitude. Our attitude determines altitude. Our attitude is we're going to serve the Lord Jesus Christ. We're going to honor him in the church house and out of the church house because we're the church. We understand that. We're going to do the right, right thing every time. Every time there's a decision to make, we're going to make the right decision. We're going to take our time and not get in some hasty thing and be pulled offside by a devil. Amen? Amen. 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 Every head bowed this morning. I want to thank you personally for being here today. You had a choice whether you came to church or whether you didn't. Many of you had a choice whether you came here or whether you didn't. I thank you for coming to Lee Grand to church today. But I want to ask you if for some horrible reason you weren't able to come back next week because you passed into the next journey. Is your eternity with God or is it with the devil? What does your future look like? Have you made that proper choice and you know your destination is with the Lord Jesus Christ? Or have you just said, well, okay, sirrah, sirrah, if God wants me, he'll take me. It's not that way. Jesus himself, being God in the flesh, said a man must be born again. You must be born of the Spirit, born from above. To, in order to enter the kingdom of God, of God, you have to be born into that kingdom. You can't just, just do some good stuff yourself, do good deeds and get there. If you could do that, the blood of Jesus would not have been needed. But you cannot get there on your merit. Jesus Christ is the only door that you can enter the kingdom of God through. Have you been born again if not, will you receive Jesus as your personal Savior this day and say, I've made a choice today. I hear about the two kingdoms, and I choose Christ. I want you in my life, Lord Jesus. I want to live for you. I want to live in eternal life with you. Would you come into my heart? Would you save me today? Is there anybody here with lift lifted hand would say, I've never received Christ as my personal Savior, but this day I want to. I want Jesus in my life. I want Christianity. I want to live as a Christian. Then I take it with no hands that you are Christians, because surely you would make that choice if you're not. The choice is very simple. Two kingdoms. Two kingdoms. So today we choose to serve God, choose to serve life. 
Does everybody look at me? Does that go well with you? Yeah. Are you well with that? You choose to serve God. You choose to serve life. You choose to receive. Well, God has got a, a system as the gentleman come this morning. He's got something that he set in motion, Jesus did, while he was here on earth. And he served communion to his disciples. And he served it in such a fashion that they took a cup that had some juice in it. And they took bread that was there. And they sopped the bread over in the juice like you would a chi a chip and dip. Kind of like chip and dip time. <laughs> we don't do it that way. But we could, but we've got a piece of bread and we've got a cup of juice, so you can take it all. But there they broke a piece of bread off and sopped up. He that dips sopped with it's like gravy almost. Anybody like chicken and gravy? Come on. <laughs> you know you do. <laughs> if, you, if you're a Christian at all, you like that. <laughs> you don't even have to be a good Christian to like that. But nonetheless, that's, that's kind of the way it was. It was a bread and, and, and a juice or some type of sop. But here we've got what we believe is all right with Jesus. It represents his body and the bread. It represents his blood and the juice. And Jesus said, if you don't eat my body and drink my blood, you've got no life. Well, we want that, don't we? How many of you want the life of God? I believe today that you can release your faith as you come to this table and receive him as your healer and deliverer and prosperer and bless everything the kingdom of God stands for is in him. And in him we live, move, and have our being. We can release our faith for every promise of God to be yes and amen right here at the table today. If you have ought against anyone, if you have animosity, ill will, hard feelings, you need to get that fixed. You really need to settle that. I mean, you can settle that right now from your end of it by bowing your head and saying, Lord, I've had a hard time forgiving such and such, but you said through you and by you we could do all things. So I believe I receive the ability today to forgive them and release them and let them go. Amen. If you'll do that, I believe you'd be blessed for it. But either way, here's the table. Father, we thank you for the bread. We thank you for the juice as it represents the body and the blood of our blessed Redeemer. We come by faith today to receive it and that your kingdom would come and your will would be done in our hearts and lives supernaturally because we release our faith in Jesus today. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Come, two lines. They'll give you the body and they'll serve you the cup.